Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is Phil Demetriotis and uh, I had this special thing for you guys where I, last November um, in, in 2017, I went to the CTN Animation Expo event. And what the CTN Animation Expo event is, it stands for Creative Talent Network. It's a, an organization created by this wonderful lady named Tina Price. Um, and in She's been really fantastic, uh, and I've even had the opportunity to go do portfolio re reviews for them and some other events and stuff. And anyway, she puts this event on in Burbank, and it costs like 90 bucks to 100 and something, depending on what you want to do. If you want to walk the floor, or go watch artists talk, or go watch directors talk. Anyway, it's a really, really cool event, and I was able to take my cell phone and a video camera with me and record some of the footage until my digital camera died and then I just went to my cell phone which turns out my new iPhone 8 records better than my darn digital camera but anyway I got to go around interview some artists talk to some friends I know and people that I've worked with and people that I know in the industry so I think it's pretty cool and again I'm sorry for the delay on this because what I mentioned before is I recorded this I lost all the files on my uh, my Lacey drive I was able to get them back and get the virus removed, transfer the files over, get them in an edited form, get them into Camtasia where I could edit them and adjust them. So there's still a little bit of rough edit here, but I didn't want to wait any longer and I wanted to get this video out to you guys. So um, some of you that don't get to leave your country or you might be stuck somewhere and can't travel, here's your open eye experience in 1080p getting to watch the CTN Animation Expo. And there's some couple really talented, cool individuals in here that you're, you're going to get to see that we get to talk to. Okay, so um, let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching, guys. Take care. Well, here it is, guys. Let's walk on in and see what's going on. So here we are, I just walked around the corner and here's two of my our students from Fullerton. We just happened to run into you. We have Isha and Tito the Destroyer here, right? And, um, and then what's cool is over here, we have, there's at CTN, there's some uh, figure drawing models, costume models set up outside that you could go check out. And we're gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna give you a rough view of everything that's going on. There's quite a few people and CTN is taking place in this big, giant, sort of portable setup tent. Usually it's inside the Marriott, which is over there, but it's not looking like that this trip. So we're gonna go ahead and make our way into the big CTN booth here. How cool is that? Have a model sitting out that you can sketch. That is so super awesome, right? So here we are, we're checking out Andrew Blachet sculpture. All kinds of beautiful work up here. Let's zoom in over here and get a close look up. Are you Andre? No. no, no okay. No, I'm just uh, helping Just him out. sitting in? Yeah, okay. Uh, he'll be back in an hour. Okay, it's such yeah. beautiful work. Yeah, I know. It's great. Does he... Uh, I'm recording this, so I'm going to put it up on YouTube for all our foreign viewers. Is he using a, a Sculpey as a base? Is that what he uses? No, he's using... Uh, I forget the name of this kind of oil 
but it's an oil-based uh, clay. And then does it completely heat dry? Uh, he bakes it, and then uh, once it's uh, baked, he then does a uh, resin cast of it, and then this is the resin cast. Oh, gotcha. It. So it's he does like a mold after when it's all exactly. finished over, right? It's, it, t it looks like that, actually. When it's done? Yeah. yeah, and then, oh, gotcha, and then he takes this, and then he, he makes a shell for that, right, yeah. a mold, and then he can pour these in there. Yeah, so it, it's actually with the clay, and then he makes a, a mold out of that, and then once the mold is done, the negative, he fills it up with the resin cast, it's a mixture, it okay. comes out, it looks something like, like the white sculptures over there, Yeah. and then he paints some, uh, this gray color so that it gives it this, like, evil tone. Okay. Like Okay. He's experimented with the uh, Yeah, the one up here where he's painted on it too. How cool. What a talented guy, right? Yeah. 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 And then he has to attach him at the end, yeah. separates the pieces that are more complex and small, and then yeah. uh, he makes a cast of those, and then he puts them together. Okay, so, yeah. which is common, right, when you get into, like, like the bone arrow or exactly. something so very like a simple shape, detailed. Like this one here be done at its own. He can get away with it, right, but, like, right. the axe on this guy here, he's going to have to get in there. Yeah, he can do that, too. He gets a little busy, and then he has to clean it up, sand it down a bit yeah. before they, he can present them, too, so... Yeah. It, it's not just done after it's it's casted, but then he has to smooth it out in some yeah. areas. Yeah. Have the casting what I what I really like is how he keeps his roughness in there, how yeah. he's not smoothing everything out. Well, that's what the people love the most about. Is, it it is keeps the, the energy, like in There's like in a nice drawing. That, um, he, it's a 3D print, and he made the clay base, but this actually is a 3D print. And if you compare the 3D print to something that's more handmade and rough, it, it just brings it more to life. Yeah, it that's really what is. People are really uh, like appreciating is the fact that it's rough and. It's loose, almost like a painting in itself. Very expressive. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like a CG copy of something. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's a great and, and to be honest, that is one of the downfalls of when you go into a 3D realm and you're printing stuff out. Yeah. It, Maya and everything, and even ZBrush can kill things, and right. the gestures remaining inside the piece, and every one of these you come back and you look at, and it's just absolutely fantastic. If you look at the table over here, there's three different levels of contrast. For example, there is something that is rough, like the Hellboy. Uh -huh. It's just left rough on purpose. Yeah. So you can see how it's almost done. And this is the beginning stage right here. But then you have something more intricate and it's detailed. It's not rough on purpose, it's detailed because the designer made it like that. Yeah. And then you have something really smooth and polished because, again, it's the design. Yeah. The of what the plan? Yeah. And so there's two different variations of, I guess, of surface texture. Yeah. One's intentional, one's designed. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, so, okay. Yeah. I'm going to grab one of these so I can put them up on our blog site to give him full credit. Of course. Hey, come forward. by. He'll be back in an hour. Yeah, I will. Come by and yeah. see if maybe I can talk to him. And, he was here uh, and, earlier. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. And so this is just an example. I mean, that's just this is this rough oil based clay. Then when he heats it, that'll completely harden, right? Yeah, this one. He's still adding um, masses to it. Yeah. Working out the shapes. Yeah, oh, that's so beautiful. It makes me want to go home and just sculpt for hours <laughs> and hours, right? Yeah. yeah. It's killer. It's really nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. We'll stop by in a little bit. Uh, All right, everybody, look, I just came around the corner, and here's Dave Coleman, the man, the myth, the legend. Here he is, Dave. I'm just here to deliver pizza, so I don't really know what you're coming down for. But okay. We're here at the CTN Animation Expo in Burbank. Phil Dimitriotis is the man. You can learn a lot from him. and one of the nicest guys I know. And people can find all your stuff at? davidsdoodles.com. And also, the best thing to follow me is on Instagram. Okay. Uh, at davidsdoodles. And one more quote, yeah. happy wife, happy life. That's I'm right. Out. Take care, buddy. Coming up here next, guys, is the one and only amazing Glenn Vilpu, who is known all around the world, is one of the current masters of the human figure and just he's such a nice guy and such an amazing instructor he has books for sale uh different classes that have gone online he also used to teach classes at the local 839 animation union and uh can't say enough about him he's a really fantastic guy one cool story i have is i had an opportunity to take a, a couple classes from him once 
And um, one time he came over and I was drawing the figure and he took my pencil from me and he broke off the tip and he and then he said, are you an illustrator? And I said, yeah. And he goes, I could tell because it looks like you've been trained like one. Breaks off the tip, gives me back the pencil and he said, now go draw with the blunt end, you know. So that was sort of cool. It's something that sort of resonated with me about not focusing on detail, but focusing on the broad strokes of what you're doing. And that's something that's always helped me out quite a bit. So thanks a lot, Mr. Vilpu. And here he is. Hey everybody, look, we just happen to walk up here on the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Vilpu. And he's sitting here and he's doing some beautiful drawing and sketching. And can I ask you, sir, is this all from your imagination? Yes. From years and years of understanding form and light? In value, right? In anatomy? Anatomy, I start out what I'm doing. I approach the drawing and the imagination. Exactly what I teach. Okay, step absolutely. Going from the imagination. Absolutely. Taking, uh, get the action. Construct yeah. your anatomy. Sure. And then your book there, can we tell our viewers where could they find that book if somebody wanted to purchase? It uses a textbook all over the world. Okay. And week by week, exactly what I do. Uh huh. Excellent. And if they wanted to purchase that, where could they find that? Do you have it your own website, or do you have it on Amazon? Go to Vilpu Academy. Vilpu Academy. And, dot com, and they could look it up and find it. All right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. It's always awesome to get to see an awesome legend here, Mr. Vilpu. So enjoy, folks. So as I'm sitting here with Mr. Vilpu having this great discussion, I had to record some of it. One of the topics we were talking about is I'm a really big believer in learning shape and form and how to draw from your imagination. And a lot of times, even at, at Fullerton College where I teach at full time, we do a free uh, costume figure drawing on Fridays. And we have students that come from all over just for free to draw. There's no, there's only a donation. And one of the things we talk about is how important it is that if you know anatomy, you know shape, you know perspective, you know your horizon line, and then you know your osteology and your anatomy, you can draw things from your imagination. And would you not agree with that? One of the things I say, if you can draw, you can do anything. Yeah. If you can draw, you can compose, design. There's nothing that you can't do. Yeah. It's, every, it's the basis. Drawing is just an interface to your mind. Uh -huh. And then, especially someone with your, I, I talk about this, I call it a visual library, and your, your experience with looking at silhouette and shape. When someone asks you, how long did that take you, you really spent, how many years have you been drawing for, sir? Well, I'm 81 now. Okay. And a healthy 81 at that, right? Because look at that, guys. That's beautiful to have that level of drawing and understanding of draftsmanship come out, you know. Yeah, so I've been doing this. I took my first drawing class from a while in about 1950. Okay. Yeah. And but I remember sitting down and copying out my father's books when I was Five and six years. Uh huh. So been doing this for seventy-five years. Yeah, that's cool. How awesome is that? You know. Well, I got to tell you this. At as a, as a young artist getting out of school, going to the local 8 through 9, taking classes, I mean, we're talking 20 years ago, you were a huge inspiration to so many people in the way that you draw and the way you talk about the importance, the, the techniques that you share and everything that you give forward to the community. And I, I think we all really appreciate that and highly respect you. So we just thank you very much for everything. And you keep, you keep improving Okay, 81, I draw better now than I did five years ago. See? Yeah. And can I ask you this? How many times out of an average week do you just pull out your sketchbook and draw? Do you have a ritual habit? This is a sketchbook of mine. Yeah. Uh, but this is uh, about a year and a half ago. This is just covers a couple months. Okay. All over Europe. Yeah. Yeah. People and everything. Netherlands, deathbed, seeing the cars taking time, waiting, waiting, killing time. Yeah, how wonderful is that? 
Look at that. Sketching, portable watercolor sets. This is one of the things that we really... Totally unedited. This is the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. Just beautiful. Look at that, guys. So, and they could find this for sale as well on your website, too. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This thing is books. Yeah. CTN, if you come down here to CTN. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Vilpu. Appreciate it so much, sir. All right, take care. All right, next we have happened upon the wonderful and super awesome Frank A. Okay, amazing uh, animal and caricature and cartoonist. And we're going to be taking a look at some of his beautiful work. And he happens to be up here. And he is working right now. Look down here. Paints, has acrylics out. guys who just walked up to check out Armand Balthazar and uh, his amazing booth here at CTN. He has some beautiful work up here and a lot of this work, the prints are available and uh, we'll sort of go through some of it together here. Gorgeous stuff. Beautiful compositions, great illustration work.
Next, I would like to introduce you guys to the amazing one and only Noelle Trieu. Uh, Noelle is the production designer and visual development artist at Sony Future Animation, also known as SPA, which is Sony Pictures Animation. Uh, she was the production designer on the Smurfs, uh, the uh, Lost Village. She's an amazing artist and a wonderful person. Uh, without a doubt, she's one of my favorite all-time artists to look at. And um, let me show you why here. And real quick, just a little bit more about Noelle. Um, I was really lucky where I got to take a class with her and we met and were friends in a class many, many, many years ago when we were first starting out in the industry. And it was really cool to watch her grow and develop all these years. And she's such just a kind, spirited, nice person. So, Noel, thank you for sharing your work with us today and for the interview. And you can find more of her work on hubcap10.blogspot.com. Thank you, Noel. Take care. So I have a bunch of samples here of Noelle's work, and as we sort of fly by it, we're not giving it the true time it deserves. But I just want you to look at the soft, subtle feel of color, of values. Look at the focal point. Uh, look for the visual reads to see where she wants you to be looking. Look at where part of the animation path is and what's going to be happening and how she's telling the story. And, and it's really quite a, an amazing uh, arrangement of work to look at and it's so inspiring everything from just the roughness the color the feel there's so much to to grab from it even from a linear perspective point looking at how she sets up foreground midground and background she really is acting as a true you know golden storyteller and just bringing forth all her knowledge especially from a color standpoint into evoking just a lot of wonderful emotion inside work. And she has a way of even simplifying things and just giving it, you know, an easy read without overdoing it. And it's just absolutely fantastic. So, uh, you know, I've showed her work before on, on our my YouTube site, and it's just absolutely, you know, great to look at. So here it is, and uh, we're going to get to talk to her in just a second. And uh, it was great to get to see her again. So thank you, Noelle, so much. We appreciate it. Enjoy the awesome, wonderful work. Hi, everybody. Look at who we happen to walk up here. We have the, the production designer and the esteemed, ultra-fantastic development artist, Noelle Trieu. Noelle, how are you? It's good to see you again. Hello, Phil. It's good to see you, too. And, and, and it's been... We, we have a little bit of... It's been 20 years because we took classes together a long time ago. And you are currently working on... You're finishing up production design on Smurfs, is it all done? That's correct, it's, it's done and the movie is in theaters. Okay, it was yeah. It a really wonderful show to work on with a lot of great artists. So yeah, a lot of talented people. Yes. And then after this, we're gonna sort of see where you land or That's right. Maybe what takes place. Maybe helping out other shows uh -huh. at Sony, and it out. What was your experience working as production designer for Sony Imageworks, it was quite wonderful? Uh, it was exceptional and it's most and foremost because of all the people. I mean, the, yeah. the talent of the artists and, and uh -huh. their creativity and their willingness to share what they know is, is absolutely amazing. So it's, it's really a golden opportunity to be able to work in a studio. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we were always we were always playing your little bits you guys were doing on YouTube when you were in the middle of production and you're talking about some of the things that you were doing. We were always playing those for the class and all the students loved it. So anyway, thank you so much, Noelle. It's a you're pleasure welcome. seeing you and uh, good luck. We'll talk to you soon. So here's what it looks like when you walk in and see team it's total chaos. There's a giant group, there's all different types of studios, and you have individual artists with your group. It's huge. This goes on forever. So over here on the side, we have Blue Sky, and Blue Sky is showing one of their, their uh, projects. And if you look down here, I'm just going to raise the camera. It's pretty loud, and there's a lot of people here. So uh, we're just going to turn on the recorder here and there and try to show you more work for more artists. Okay. So every artist has a dedicated booth, and uh, they have a bunch of work for sale and available.
there's Camille over there. Beautiful work. Got on the table. Absolutely stunning. How are you today, Camille? I'm Bonjour. fine, thank you. Ça va? Yes, ça va très bien. Va? <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. Has it been really busy for you? Oh yes, very busy. I'm almost tired. And if people want to find out any information on your books and your pieces, yes. where can they find that at? Ah, uh, yes, on Amazon and any bookstore. And any bookstore on Amazon? Right. Yeah. It's Stuart NG. Yeah. Right? Okay. And they can yeah find me on my on my Facebook or on my uh, website. All right. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Hi guys, here I am. We walked up into Fixon's booth and I'm here with my buddy Andy. Hey, Andy up? is the man. And one of the things that Fixon's does so well is that they are integrated into the, the print technology where they are printing on canvas. So if you can see, look at this. They're printing these big, giant, beautiful digital pieces. Look at how high that is, all the way up there. And they are printing on canvas and they are doing, they're actually one of the best printers Without a doubt, because I don't know many other printers that do the quality and have the courteousness that you guys have. Um, I, Andy happens to be right down the street from us in Fullerton, but he can submit anything and ship anything. Is that correct? Yeah, nationwide. Anything nationwide. And what about for anything overseas? We are working on that right now. Anywhere that works with UPS and USPS, we can definitely send it over to Okay, US. so anywhere with USPS. And one of the things when you ship to people in long distance, you roll up the canvas, is that correct? Yes, it yeah. So depending on the size of it and then the finish you want, you either send it rolled up most likely to you, or if you want to pay for the shipping cost, you can send this entire thing to you. So. Yeah, I mean, they can frame it for you. That's one of the great things with Fixons is they frame your work, as you can see here, and they place a wooden pine frame on it. And it's, look at how beautiful it is. It's all tied up. It's just gorgeous. It's so huge. And so, uh, Andy, thank you so much, sir. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too. Phil. Okay. All right. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. I want to also show you some other beautiful uh, work here from Fixons. They also have this ability. This is all printed on canvas, as you can see on the, the corner edge here. And they also do this thing where they print on this really nice sheen material down here. It's a, it's a really thin paper, and you get this really beautiful, glossy look. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's one of the only printers that I know that are doing this level of work and bringing this type of design uh, into their, their printing techniques. I mean, if you can see this, I know the light conditions here are a little iffy, but you see how beautiful that is, okay? It's absolutely stunning, you know? It looks so great. And oh, by the way, I gotta mention, that's one of my former students there. That's Maddie Hodges. There's her MH. Okay, that's one of her pieces that she's been doing. Okay, and uh, to get, that's Patrick Ballesteros right there. So to get that level of print and detail, it's absolutely stunning. And you really can't go wrong. There's also one of our instructors and buddies, that's Michael Matsumoto. That's another piece from him. And we come over here, and there's another print piece here from Michael Matsumoto as well. There's another one right here. Okay. And uh, there's another piece right here. Okay. So you can see the quality and the detail that's available only at Fixon. So take advantage of it, guys. All right, so we snuck up here on Creative Mark, oh, the man, the myth, on, and the man. legend down here, drawing away, sketching. What's up, brother? It's good to see you, man. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. So I'm recording this. I'm going to put it up on YouTube. Caught in right? the act. And so uh, he, Mark has his beautiful book here available. Right? The art and feel of making it real. And here he is. Look at that. Signing every book. So Mark, if people want to find out, your stuff is on Creative 8 Marks University right here. That's it. That's it. Right? It's good to see you, brother. I'm glad it's all well. We got to go out with Joe and grab a beer soon. Oh, like 12. Okay. See you, pal. Later. Alright guys, look who we ran into, the awesome, the one and only Rob Rupel. Rob, how you doing buddy? Great, great. Good. And uh, Rob has this fantastic book, you guys, if you've not seen this, Graphic LA, where you, can you tell us a little bit about the book, Rob, and what you've done with your book? It was an uh, evolution from my teaching that I did at Art Center. Um, I started off very naturalistic, and as I needed a, a way to explain to myself and other people composition, I started using more simple shapes. 
then I realized that the simple shape actually carries a lot of weight to it. So you don't need a lot of extra detail. You can have a very iconic shape, and if you get your color and value relationships right, it appears to look real. So it was really just an evolution of what I was uh, doing for my own artwork. Excellent. Yeah. And, and of course, one of the great things I always tell some of my students is that I was in the industry too for about 17 years, and then I started teaching on the side, mm -hmm. and you learn so much from teaching, right? You come up with these well, little... you learn by having to explain things. You sort of, in your own mind, make it more concrete. Yeah. Okay. And if, if people want to find your books, Graphic LA or right over here, Aspect Ratio, where could they find them at? You can find the paperbacks of Graphic LA on Amazon or at okay. Design Studio Press. The hardback and then my original book, I'm the only one who has them. Okay. And then are you still, didn't you have some books at Stuart NG too? He may still have some of the old sketchbooks. Okay, because yeah. I think that's where I got your sketchbook from. Yeah, he may still there. have some of those. Okay, yep. excellent. All right, well, thank you, sir. Thanks. Take care. We're walking by, and there's one of our awesome models that comes up for time for our Friday events. There's Tony up there, and look at how cool this is. Everyone's out here drawing and sketching. Okay, pretty cool. All right, good job, Tony. Hi, Phil. Uh, oh, hi, Phil. and there's Candace. Hi, Candace. Hi. How are you? What are you good. drawing? Uh, See your wonderful drawing? I'm drawing some figures. You're looking down there? Yep. Yeah? Good? <laughs> yep. All right. So here we are, we're going to check out the awesome one and only Patrick Bellasco, who's going to be doing a live draw for us today. It's actually all done, I'm just going to like swoop it all the way out. All we want to know is... Huh? Yeah, I'll be here. Yeah. We just want to know what kind of magic pencils you're using, so we can buy them and draw like you. I got this in Japan, it's a Mephix, Did you? a Did you? Mephixi, okay. Mephixi marker. Alright, how you doing buddy? Good, how are you? Good, I like it's your good shirt. to see you. Your shirt's very fancy. Thank you sir. How have you been? Fuller, you graduated, you're doing all that. I'm then... done, out of grad school, uh, teaching, freelancing, being as busy as can be. That's good. And trying to put dedicated effort into my uh, YouTube site. How is that going? I haven't really put much effort into it. Now I'm going to start putting a lot. Of... Like That's what this is honest. for. I haven't done much, but I'm starting to. I'm just going to go around and record all of my friends from the industry. and and put it up on YouTube for free and tell them. So real quick, where can people find more info about you or buy your sketches and drawings? PatrickBallesteros.com. Yeah. Excellent, all right. And they can find some of your books. Sketch now what about, books, don't print, you have some everything. stuff at Stuart NG as well? Me? No, 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 no. I just sell most of my stuff online and then at conventions. Okay, cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point this up at the screen now and we're gonna watch you draw for a little bit. But what I don't like about the screen is it has highlights from the outside windows on it. A lot of glare, yeah. And for some of you that don't know Austin Patrick, the one thing about you that inspires me so much is you are in your sketchbook all the time. Yeah. And you're always drawing. And I don't even understand how you can draw in front of your wife and kids. Because when I do that, I'm told to put it away. <laughs> oh, I get told to put it away all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So, But I still know, listen sometimes. Which is something you could tell Harvey Weinstein, right? You could tell him to put it away, but it's different. Whoa, for... we did that at a CTN? That's great. That's I know, right? Ever. But for us artists, right, in our sketchbooks all the time, um, being around you and seeing how much you're always drawing and working is really a true inspiration. Well, thanks, man. It's always you good know? to be around other artists and cool dudes that really know how to mix red and yellow and blue and yellow and yeah. all those compliments. And get to talk there. about composition. Yeah, and, that's the best stuff. Yeah. yeah, nothing's worse than getting your work critiqued by someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, right? Yeah, you know, it's okay every once in a while. Yeah, every now and then. We'll edit okay. that part out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, that's just, uh, you know, I'll go back to the drawing. I have a friend in the studio who's having to do that right now. A uh, demo? And, no, it, all his work is getting critiqued by an art director. He works in a different division, not in animation, but all his work is being critiqued by someone who got out of art school like a year ago. Oh, that's rough, man. Yeah, that's way rough because they're changing everything. Yeah. You know. All right, I got too much glare on there, buddy, so I'm just going to give you a shout-out and put this on YouTube. Thanks, Thank man. Thank you again, sir. We'll see you around. Thank All right, you. Bud. Got to give a shout-out to my buddy there, Patrick Ballesteros. I was lucky to meet Patrick in graduate school uh, in the Masters of Fine Art program at Cal State University Fullerton, and Patrick is just one of these all-inspiring guys. I mean, number one, super cool, super friendly to be with, and super talented. In fact... 
he is one of the motivators for me to be back in my sketchbook on a regular basis. Uh, there hit a point where I was so busy and part of the industry and just getting eaten up by things that were happening in the industry. I, lo I lost part of that love of drawing again. And being around Patrick, I picked that back up and put it back in my sketchbook. And I will never get, lose that, that love again for drawing because of getting tied up with all this busyness that happens in the studio environment at times. So thanks, Patrick. And uh, if you want to check his stuff out, just do a Google search on him. Patrick Ballesteros, he's on, he's on everything. He's on Instagram. He sells his work. He goes to conventions. He teaches on the side. He's an all-amazing artist. So just take a look. Here's some samples of his work for you guys to check out. And I think they speak for himself. He's an amazing draftsman. And he also does these really beautiful, sort of very nostalgic, energized pieces on kids' childhood and on superheroes and stuff like that. So anyway, thanks, Patrick. Check it out. Here we are, we're looking at Armand Serrano's awesome. Armand, I'm recording you drawing, buddy. How are you? How are you, sir? Good to see you. We love your vignettes book, it was beautiful. Thank you, man. Coming from you. And I just thought I would record and go around and uh, we can tell everybody where they can find it online. Okay. They Is can, it? Well, they can buy it from my, uh, from my website. Your website? And uh, my Etsy. Okay. All right. We'll do. We'll let oh, them know. Go, actually, if you go to my... I just got corrected. If you go to my website, it will point you to my Etsy. Okay. So, All yeah, right. that's it. That's All right. you can get it. I was just going to record. There's so many people here. I want to let everybody know all of our uh, out-of-country followers where okay, they could great. find your wonderful work at. Well, there you go. Okay. I mean, all my books, you can buy them uh, okay. you know, online through Etsy. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. All right, guys. I'm here looking at Chris Tabota's booth. And back in the day, here's Chris. Hi, Chris. Hey, how's it going? Back hey, in the day, you know. in I remember 2007, 2008, you were blogging. You were just starting to blog. Yeah. And now look at you. You're here at CTN. And he has an awesome book that's out called Snickerdoodles. Yeah. And can we take a peek inside uh, real Yeah, quick? absolutely. So Snickerdoodles is basically just a collection of uh, personal sketches that I would do outside of my day job. Uh -huh. uh, I currently work as a concept artist in the video game industry. Okay. So um, so this is just something to do a little bit different stuff. So it's not uh -huh. just to kind of, you know, do something different from what I do during the day. So and, uh, out, outside of your day work, how much time do you still put into your sketching and drawing? Um, I draw a lot, um, like at night, on the weekends. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I'll, I'll go outside and draw from light, you know, stuff like this. And then other times I'll just draw from, you know, like imagination, just sure. kind of fun, fun, whimsical stuff. Sure. I tend to focus on that. It's gorgeous work. It's oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just very lighthearted and, you know, funny and whimsical. So yeah. it's kind of what I focus on. And um, That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, it's a beautiful book and hopefully soon you'll have some of that either on a website soon yeah. or something because I know we have a lot of followers all over sure. that are going to want to be able to get a hold of that. Yeah, you know? at, at the moment, I'm just selling at CTN at different yeah. expos, but uh -huh. uh, yeah, maybe someday I'll set, set something up online and Excellent. Uh, everyone else can get it. Okay. Out, so. Cool. Well, thanks, Chris. Cool. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Take care. All right, everybody. We're here at Wacom and I have in front of us here, we have Doug. Doug. Okay, and Doug's going to tell us about what some of Wacom's new technology that they're working on, which is pretty cool. Some of this isn't even available yet, right? That's correct. Uh, so Wacom is going to be coming out with a couple of new devices in the coming year. Uh, it's already been announced, so it's already public information. Yeah. But we'll be uh, having the new Cintiq 24 and the new Cintiq 32. 32 inches of drawing power. That is insane, right? Uh, it's incredible. It's going to be great, and we're really looking forward to it. It's going to have our new ProPen 2 technology, so 8,000 levels of pressure, and it's going to be an amazing drawing experience. Okay, and is that what's right down here on the table? No, right here we're showing uh, the Cintiq Pro 13 and 16 which are also relatively new. Um, same technology that you'll see on our new devices coming out in 2018. Okay, all right. So pretty much um, outside of the, the portable Cintiq, was there any other updates coming with the um, the portable computer? What do you call the... Oh, the Mobile Studio exactly, Pro. Exactly, the Mobile Studio Pro. The mobile, the mobile Studio Pro is staying the same. We still have uh, the 13-inch and 16-inch. And um, 
You won't see a new generation of that for uh, quite okay. a while. Okay. All right, but the big so the big tech update is that you guys are moving fully into this having very large screen drawing right. compatibility for Correct. artists at Correct. a digital level. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we'll have two brand new large Cintiqs for anybody's studio or if you're a freelancer at home, it's a perfect device for it. Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks so much, Doug. Thanks, Take care. Bill. All right, guys. Next, we have Jose Sanchez here and there's some of his work and here's the man himself. All right. How you doing, Jose? Hey, doing good. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What kind of work do you do? What do you specialize in? Oh, well, um, I work as a concept artist. Uh -huh. uh, I study at the uh, Vancouver Animation School. Uh -huh. So I attend uh, like a program for program for a year. Uh -huh. It was uh, uh, like a concept art, and I, I, I that program was for a diploma, right? Okay. Uh, before that, I study fine arts uh -huh. uh, back in my country. And where's your original country? Um, my country is uh, uh, Costa Rica. Costa Rica, okay, yeah. excellent. So I came all yeah. the way to here. And, and uh, that's great because we have there's a lot of students that are from all over the world, uh -huh. and some right. of them are trying to figure out how to do the yeah. same thing and to get where you're at, yeah, where you're yeah. here, and you're showing this beautiful work down here, you know, just going over everything. So cool, I love that piece. Yeah. Beautiful. I really enjoy it. And so the work that you do is most of your work game oriented or animation or a little bit of both? I think it's a little bit of both because uh, for me it's like a uh, hard to choose from you know backgrounds or maybe character design. Sure. So I love working both. Especially, I noticed the styles you're in. Yeah, you're yeah, all the yeah. way in something very cool and sort of '70s influence and '60s, and then you're getting very realistic with your light yeah. and your shadows and everything. Yeah, well, um, uh, basically, I think my my I, since I study fine arts, I'm I'm really inspired with uh, for uh, classical painters, classical master painters. Mm -hmm. And so, but uh, even I, I, you know, study a lot of um, classical artists. I, I, th I think I find my own style, mm -hmm. which uh, you can see is basically the treatment of color. Yeah. Like I think it's um, like a bright colors. You can see. The, yeah. Um, yeah, like bright colors and... And do you, are you on Instagram? What, what yeah. do you... So if people want to follow you or find out more, are you on ArtStation? Yeah, for sure. Um, you can follow me on ArtStation. Uh, Jose Sanchez, or do you have a different name? No, uh, I have the this name. Uh, my nickname is uh, Pedro Tro, like P-E-R-R-O. And there it is, right there. Yeah. And that's your art station, and that's also your Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well. Even Facebook. And Facebook too. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. Here we are, at the Daily Zoo, and next we have here is Chris Ayers. All right. Excellent. How are you, sir? Doing pretty good. Thank you. Good. So you can tell us. You, some of you have seen Chris's books before. They're on Stuart NG. Aren't they also? Do you also sell your work? Daily Zoo, don't you have some stuff on Amazon too? Uh, through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, through my website. Chris, and what's your website? Uh, ChrisAyersDesign.com So ChrisAyersDesign.com And Chris, tell us a, bit, a little bit about yourself. What's your main bread and butter job? Uh, I work as a freelance character designer for film and TV. Uh, okay. And then the Daily Zoo is uh, my personal art project where I've started drawing an animal a day uh, after being treated for cancer just as a way to kind of continue my healing process. And that is so awesome because uh, we talk about that and I have I put a bunch of lectures up online okay. on drawing and I do it for free and we talk about if you could get up every morning and draw just a different animal or a different person every day and that's something that you're doing right mm -hmm. yep. and that is that's been a huge benefit for you oh, in, in what yeah. ways uh, just many ways I mean it's it's um, it's provided a lot of sanity <laughs> yeah um, but it's it's uh, been a nice balance to uh, drawing for other people uh, during the day job it's been great practice I'm today's day 4,200 and I think 50 um, and uh, you know I've learned had a, had, a, had a chance to really improve my skills yeah by doing that and staying devoted to it right 
and uh, just another question do you find it to be a little bit of a relax from getting away from the freelance and professional work when you get to draw what you want to do and you get to come up with your own ideas and concepts right yeah absolutely i mean it's it's wonderful it's a wonderful um opportunity to be able to make a living drawing for other people yeah um, but then it's uh doing that is, is not always as fulfilling in the same ways as creating for myself so it's a nice sure and, and what is this thing that you speak of making a living right <laughs> yeah. and you're not a starving artist right yeah no you're doing very well for yourself yeah, right absolutely. because i see your books everywhere they're absolutely fantastic we love your design style and your sensibilities, the looseness. We love the way uh, you play with your shapes and everything. It's absolutely fantastic work. So do you have any uh, suggestions or recommendations for all the artists that can't make it from all over the world that are stuck in either Brazil or Hungary or China that are watching this site? Yeah, anything uh, you'd like to tell them? Follow your heart and uh, you know, if you're passionate about art, keep doing it and uh, work hard and I think opportunities will, will come. Great. All right, everybody. So um, there's Chris Ayers, right? And you can find one more time. What's your website? Uh, Chris Ayers, uh, design com. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Yep. Have Thank a good you. one. Cool. Here we are. My buddy, John Navarez. Here he is. He's sketching in a book. Excellent. So we stopped here. We're looking at my buddy John of ours at his beautiful book. This is available on Stuart NG, and there's absolutely beautiful drawings and sketches here. Uh, John is up in the Bay Area. He just finished working at Pixar, and um, here we'll have John give us a shout out real quick. John, hey, good to see you, buddy. <laughs> okay, and um, you can find John's book right here on Booking. He has a new one that just came out a week ago, and there's the link for it. Thanks, John. Thank Appreciate you, guys. It. Thank and, you. And will that also be available at Stuart NG, too? Yes, uh, they'll be available at Stuart NG, oh. and uh, they'll also be available at the uh, online address here. Right this there is, at Booking. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. All right. All right, everybody. Here's one of my former students, Christina Cornett. She's here. Hi, Christina. Hi, Phil. How's it going? Good. And I'm look really at her cool yes. booth. Look at all this cool stuff that she has. <laughs> so, how's, how's CTN been? It's been yeah. yeah, it's my second year, so super busy. Yeah, and it's a great self promotion, right? You yeah, get a definitely. lot of a lot of leads and a lot of feedback. So I thought I'd go around and interview people like this. I'll put it on Phil's Design Corner, but then I also get to share it with other students so they could see sort of this pathway. So tell us about some of your work that you have here yeah. out on display. Well, some of it I did in your class actually. I did this this stuff in your class. Okay. So this was from a couple years ago. And I had some books left. And let's see, where are the ones? I did these in your class. Okay. Excellent. I did this one in, in your class. Yeah, I remember the Patrick. all these. All beautiful. Yeah, these are all yours. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, in your class. Yeah. Um, this one was in your class. Uh huh. And then, um, if someone wants to buy this book, where could they get it from? Um, they can get it from me, or I'm going to have a Gumroad available online. Okay. Uh, Christina Cornett. That's yeah. Me. Yeah, um, dot com or um, or on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, Christina underscore Cornette. Okay. So yeah. And what I really like too is you're doing a lot of these really cool. You have these little skills available. For yeah. People, right? Yeah. Actually, the book that I was working on in your class. Yeah. Um, this is one of those images for it. Yeah. So that was I was working on that like three years ago, and I'm still working on it. Yeah. So. Excellent. It feels amazing. Listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, we're we're so we're super stoked to have you be part of our program, and it's cool to get to come here and look at all this beautiful work that you have out, you know. And you're you're an inspiration for other students, you know, and everyone out there in the art world too. Because I mean, I'm going to put this on 
on my YouTube site. Oh, so you. we have like 7,000 people from all over, and especially in other countries. We have Brazil and China and all over that are looking at this, yeah. you know, and it's great to see how you create all of your work and you bring it together and you're doing your own self-promotion, right? Someone actually found me because he saw my art in one of your videos. So oh, really? thanks for featuring me. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> That's a small world, right? Yeah. So if you have any suggestions for anybody out there, what would uh, it be? Uh, listen to your teachers, number one. Uh, feels awesome. And also, um, just be genuine when you're trying to network with people. It's not about climbing a ladder. It's about making connections. It's about making friends. And those people will, you want to bring everybody up at the same time. It's not about like getting something. So That's when you right. go and meet somebody, you just want to be friends with them, be genuine, and never ask for anything. Be that's yourself. right. Be yourself. And that's actually a great piece of advice because so many people are trying to climb this ladder when part of the ladder is actually just you being around other artists, drawing, designing, yeah. making friends. And then those friends, like Patrick Ballesteros is my friend. He saw you. He was able to get you one of your first jobs, right? Yeah. yeah. And get you working. And now you're out and you're strumming yeah. away. I've gotten all of my jobs from recommendations from that first job. Yeah, so, and so yeah. it just keeps spiraling forward, right? Yeah. In a win-win situation. So, yeah. all right. Well, thank you, Christina. We appreciate Thanks, it. Will. And then on Instagram, they can find you at uh, Christina underscore Cornet. Okay. Yes. All right. And That's anything me. else? Facebook? Any of that? Um, Christina Cornet on Facebook. Uh, ChristinaCornet.com. Okay. Uh, Keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. It's not me. like Dragon Slayer, right? No, that would be a cool one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Christina. Say bye. All right. Take care. Thank you. Alright guys, here I am with the awesome, the one and only Tom Bancroft. Tom, it's so good to see you. I had the pleasure to work with Tom back in the day. His big idea together. We got to work for VeggieTales, which is one of my favorite all-time experiences. Is it? Right? I love that. Yeah, absolutely. It was such a great experience, such a, a positive influence in so many ways. And when I left from working there, going into other areas, I even went back to work on a project at Disney, a Winnie the Pooh Heffalump movie. And it was, it was cool, but it was nothing as cool as the people of Big Idea and the friendly spirit. It was, it was so much fun. And but and Phil was a big part of that. Amazing artist, with great attitude, and always trying to get better. Everybody yeah, we were really lucky. And I was really fortunate to get you, to meet you then. And, and so, Tom, for some of you who don't know Tom Bancroft, Tom, tell us about your background, where you're from. You worked at Disney Future Animation. And you were a lead animation. animator, right? Yeah, and I became a surprising animator on Mushu, the dragon from Milan. Uh -huh. Before that, I was an animator on, well, I go back all the way to Rescue's Down Under, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Pocahontas, Milan, Tarzan. Uh, I don't know, there's eight eight feature films. Yeah. Veggie Tales uh, directed the uh, Larry Boy 2D animated adventure. And you were also working as a board artist, as a, if I remember, I right? I storyboarded at Big Idea also. Uh -huh. and, Some uh, beautiful work. Something I always wanted to do, but didn't get really the opportunity at Disney. Yeah. I was just animating. So, and then since then, I've written a few character design books. Yeah, um, and let's look at those, because this is, I have this book, and I love it right here. It's creating characters with personality is my first book, and that will take you from a blank piece of paper to a finished character design. Okay. And then the second book is character the character mentor, mentor yeah. And that'll take you. Uh, that's once you have a character. And you had one of my pieces in these, I remember. I do. It's in this yeah, one. It's in yeah. that one, right? And so once you. Uh, Very this cool. This is about staging and expressions and posing. Excellent. So both books kind of work well together. And if people want to find more of these books, where's the best place to buy them? You can go to TomBancroftStudio.com. TomBancroftStudio.com. Yeah. Buy those in the, in the store area. And every once in a while, I'll post original art or something uh -huh. else. But I also have other books and stuff. And then, uh, or you can go to Amazon.com directly. Okay. And then I've also noticed, which I still have some of the originals from Chicago, sign. Yeah. Yeah. Opposite forces. Yeah. Okay. So that's been. Tell us about that. How has that developed for you? I've done, uh, and it's really the first four issues that I wrote and drew back when I worked with Phil at VeggieTales. Uh, I compiled them all into one, and that's what this is. It's a Kickstarter that I did, and uh, it was successfully funded. So I made a graphic novel out of it. I added sketches and more content. And yeah. Then, uh, I've also since then been Outnumbered, which is an online web comic I did about my family. Excellent, uh, excellent. And my Art of Tom Bancroft was another Kickstarter. Okay. It's just a bunch of my excellent. sketches and stuff. I'm on Instagram at Tom Bancroft one 
And, uh, Tom Bancroft won on Instagram, all right, yeah. and everywhere else. And uh, yeah, I'm all over Facebook. Yeah, they'll uh, find Twitter. you. Twitter, you can find me. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Tom, for your time. We really appreciate it. We know you're a busy guy. Thank you. Tom. And it's a pleasure to see you again, sir. All right, take care. Pleasure's all mine. Hi guys, next I want to show you some awesome sculpture work here from Andre Blaché. Um, unfortunately, it was so busy at CTN, I wasn't able to interview him. But when he was gone in a large interview, I was able to go snapshot a bunch of pictures of his sculptures and of his work. And so um, I know that he's been in the industry for a while. He also does really fantastic uh, sculpture work and makes his own resin molds. And the cool thing about all these different still photos that I'm going to show you is just take a look at how impressive the work is. And one of the things that he's done that's pretty cool is he's gone back to some old um, stories and he's made his own molds that then he then sells at events. And it, it, it's pretty impressive to see these molds. So these are were sculpted in clay. It's an oil-based clay that's called Chavant. And then he goes through the mold process and makes molds in which he is pouring plastic and then piecing parts of the plastic together and selling them. And, and it was really uh, quite, quite wonderful. And I just wanted to give you some information here about him. You could find some more information about him up on the uh, on Google and on his website. But man, just the level of work and the quality was just so just amazing and outstanding it was really cool to look at all these so i just thought you guys would like to see them close up as still lifes unfortunately there's not any sound in here or anything since i was just taking pictures with my photo but gosh look at the detail look at the what's really cool is that his work it inspires me because there's actually when i was a younger art student i would look at rodan some of his work reminded me very much very similar to this work, some of the work that he has in the Museum d'Orsay in France. Um, you can look at, he has this real rough quality to the clay and the sculpture, and that's really, really cool to see because Andre uh, is bringing that out into his own work, and I think that helps. You know, it's like having a drawing that stays rough and loose. There's a certain amount of energy in it, and he's capturing that in his own work here, which is absolutely fantastic. And everything that you're looking at here is just really stunning and amazing. Man, it's so cool to see sculpture that comes up to this level of design ability where you have great squash and stretch, you have great shapes. So, you know, I thought I would just give you guys these still poses here. Um, one thing that you guys don't know is I actually love to sculpt in clay. Um, I'm going to try to figure out a way to put some demos up and show you some of the work I've been doing. But one of the things that I'm working on right now, I'm working on like eight different characters that I've made and I'm trying to put them all into clay. Um, and it's, it, it really is a challenge because there's so many different types of clay mediums to work in. And there's, there's you have oil-based, non-based, you have sculpty, you have clays that harden, clays that have to be baked, clays that harden over time, some that take, I mean, there's just all these different backgrounds. So it's pretty cool to look at work like this because, you know, hopefully it inspires you guys. I mean, the benefit of going to an event like this is you leave in awe and an inspired because you're around the top tier level of artists and designers that really encourage you to want to be better at what you do. And I mean, there's something to me that's just absolutely fantastic about that. So anyway, enjoy these. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'll let it go through the next uh, couple seconds of, of sculptures here. And then we'll narrow it down. And then we have an awesome interview coming up. Just it wasn't even planned. I happened to run into my buddy, David Coleman. And um, I was with my with my partner that I teach with, Frank Guthrie, who heads up our 3D area of the school here. And uh, we ended up having this awesome 20 minute conversation about the industry, how to get in the, in the industry and um, and just other relative aspects to it. So it's pretty cool. Freelance, and I was like, I, yeah, I'm like, well, it's not like a magic button. He's like, I know it's not a magic button. I'm like, no, no. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm metaphorically speaking. Right, 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 right. I said it's about getting into the business. It's good to work in house first. Right. Then you create a reputation. Right. Then you, then you, then you. And right there, to talk to people. People don't even know you, and you, they need to know who you are and right. what and you help, can and then do. Also, and, then, and then the important thing I always say is that even though I'm working, like I'm under contract with Sony, I still keep in touch with. All the other clients. Right. How you doing? Yeah. He's out of sight, out of mind. Because you you have to still 
you have to stay present. Right. right, right. You have to stay present in people's minds. And they have to know that you're acting. They have right. to know that you're working. Right. Even like things like Instagram, Facebook, all those social media, I always make sure that my clients see that I'm putting stuff. Oh, yeah. Hey, did you see this stuff? Yeah. And I don't know, they're like, Oh, you know what? Hey, we were talking about this 3D print. Get frank. Um, yeah, and that's how I get those little. Because you're because you're constantly in constantly. mind. You have to and that's talking. why I, I I feel bad sometimes. I'll tell clients, I'm like, "We'll see my Instagram." It sounds a little weird, yeah. but I'm like, it's the freshest stuff I have. Yeah. You'll see the newest things I do. Yeah. Um, even the matter of like what happens is eventually people start calling you so much right. that you're not available, and right. then they I've got a few clients to say, "Just tell us when you're available." Right. Right. right, right and right. I call them like, "We'll find something." Right. 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 And you, you create a demand without even like. It's just no. a matter of handling it, you know? And, but part of this is that whole experience uh, in your, well, your history, right. which is what we were saying before, everyone wants the quick path. And, and that story I was telling before I turned on the recorder That's here fine, yeah. was from back in the day, going to Animation Academy, people drawing, sure. sketching, being around, you were just sort of coming up. Sure. Even Joe, a lot of people didn't know Joe. Yeah. And then look at the friendships there, right? Sure. You're friends with Weatherly, sure. and I'm friends with Weatherly, and then friends with Creative Mart, and sure. then everyone, that's that circle that develops over time. And everybody knows Charles and, and you got You got me work once, you know, doing yeah. work when you were so, over. Yeah. And I'm always referring work to Yeah, people. you've referred work to people, and then I, it's and like, it's I had you come to the school once, which we I want to have you back again. Oh, of course. You know, I so it's like. My mom even asked once when I was younger, like, why, why won't these people you know, like when I was friends, I'm like Paul Felix, I haven't talked in a long time, like, why won't he help you out? I'm like, because it's, and my dad would jump in, and I'd say the same thing. I said, because I, I, I'm, it's basically, I will either make him look bad or good. Right, right, and it's not a friendship right, thing. Like, I only recommend, I don't recommend people that are friends. It, I recommend and people And it's earning your stripes, though, too. Right. And I recommend know? people that deserve the job. Right. I mean, and so it's usually people I'm friends with. But I won't just any recommend any Tom, Dick, or Harry. And also, that person may be an asshole to work with. Right, you know? That's right. And it makes me look bad. Or yeah. good. You know? that, that is a huge part of the Sometimes other side. I, I recommend people that I'm not friends with, but I know that they can yes. do the job. Yes. That's all I, yes. all I need. All I need. It's happened and, before, too. Exactly. And then they will thank you. Hey, I thanks know. for bringing this guy. I know. You know he was boring. He, was, he didn't talk too much, but he got the job done. I know. I mean, I know. And then sometimes I have really, really good friends. And you can't. And I'm like, do you know of any jobs? Uh, no, I don't. You because, just have to play the yeah. game. Though. Yeah, exactly. Because I know that they will not finish it. They will not do the job. You know? So sometimes I rather refer somebody that I'm not really good friends with, that I don't know, I don't know them that well, but I know they can get the job done. Yeah, it's, I know it's it's and yeah, and it's better it's better for the project too. Right, Shameless right, self promotion. There's a guy wearing my saber tooth. Turn around real quick. Let's see the back of that hoodie. I want to see your hoodie. One B. What? Let's see your hoodie real quick. What? That's my hoodie. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> David's doodles, awesome. Okay, yeah, all right. We'll keep talking then. I think you. Yeah, I don't know if you can go in this way. I think you have to go in that way. Um, well, I don't know. I think to this day, it's the question I get all the time: is how do you get in? And like, like, how did you get started? I got started. I used to design children's footwear, or like Berber <laughs> footwear, right? So, and then like, we did uh, okay. LA gear. Like, yes, I remember LA, LA gear. So we did the little baby shoes. And then one day, Nickelodeon came to our company, ACI International, and they were uh, because we were going after a license, and they wanted to do a license on cat dog shoes. And we had done licenses for Disney. Uh, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. And then when they saw my drawings, they were like, hey, you should, get a, you should work in the industry, you should work in animation. And I was like, how do I do that? And that's how I got a job. So I was a prop designer on um, Angry Beavers. So that was my first job. Wow, industry. yeah, I remember that. Well, okay, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and then, you know, then you do characters, then you do layouts, then you do background But paintings. then you got into sculpting. Uh, I got into sculpting in 3D. When I was at Nickelodeon, the, our animation union paid for uh, sculpting. sculpting. Yes, right, right. So, so, I, to be there. so I went to Nomen. Okay, no, and I paid for the class, and when I finished the class, they reimbursed me. Oh, cool. So I got into ZBrush, I got into early phase, early stage. At the very beginning, I bought my ZBrush license for 99 bucks. Wow. When it first came out. Wow. And I remember my friend telling me, you should get ZBrush, you should get ZBrush. And I was like, I tried it, I'm like, I hate this. I tried it, I cannot. It's hard. I get that but, but you have to I, stick with it. But I stuck with it, and then 3D printing, I was there at the very, very you know, ground level. Whatever. But then you start, then, so you went digital first and then went to Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. No, 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 no. I, I, I went to Calcium Long Beach, traditional ah, illustration. Then, then, then the shoes. Wow. And, and all that stuff. And then then I, the shoes. And then, I, exactly. Okay. And then I went to the shoes. The reason why I got the shoes job is because I could sculpt them in play. Oh, cool. And then I can do patterns, I can do Photoshop, That's I can cool. do everything. That's cool. And then when I got into Nickelodeon, 
you know, you, you design for a while and then you get bored because I was going to work so fast sure. and I didn't have any work to do. So then a friend of mine was like, hey, they're teaching this mic program, we should get into it. And I was like, what is mic? You know, that was like pre-internet days. Yeah. And I got into it and then you go into Maya and then you go into ZBrush because Noman exposed me to a lot of different programs. Sure. And, and I have this sponge of the brain that I just love learning. Love. Sure. And that's another thing that I tell my students. When you get out of college, that is the end of your college career. When you go to not end of like learning. Your education. No, your no. education keeps going no. on and Once on. No, once you on. stop yeah. learning as an, as an artist, done. you're done. done. You're dying. Yeah, yeah, you're dying. Also, you're like, gone. Everyone always asks, like, what do you want to do? I'm like, it's a journey, man. I'm like, it's, it's a journey. It's not What's really next? about, like, yeah, if you think you're ever good enough, you might as well take up skydiving. Right. Uh, because then you're just going to die. And, everyone else. and that's why I always say, like, figure drawing, yeah. drawing for yourself, yeah, yeah. or studying. It's like weightlifting for a football player. To keep like keep nobody's muscle. gonna and nobody's gonna pay you to do that, but you, if you want to stay competitive, right, 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 right. keep your skills sharp. You got to do that stuff for yourself every day. Yes, keep your muscles sharp. And I always tell my students, um, like I'm always taking classes. You know, sometimes I go to class on electro and I'm exhausted. And they're like, "Were you partying?" Oh no, I had a. I'm taking this class online. It's just that the guys in Australia, so my class is at four in the morning. Excuse me. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. And then they're like, they're like, "Why do you keep taking?" And I keep telling them the day you stop learning, yeah. is you, you become that guy that that's now we're gonna lay them off. Yeah. The reason why I stayed in Poland and Nickelodeon for 16 years non-stop is because I did props. And they're like, hey, uh, can you do characters? Yeah, I can do characters. Uh, can you paint? I can paint. And then the people are like, what is the thing that you're going to uh, 3D school? Yeah, yeah, look, I'm learning how to. Oh, you can animate. So I was getting moved from project to project to project to project. Versatility to is in discipline. Exactly. When I started doing story, and now I do story and design, Sony now hired me for story right. and design. Right, right. That's my, and, and the funny thing is that I was on a project, the current one, and then all of a sudden we took a break from design, so they gave me a sequence, your story. And then all of a sudden they're like, wait, can you now do this? Go back to design. Wait, can you do some beat boards? And it's great because I'm like a chameleon, like a guest star, you come in and yep. help on any level. That's why I said today in the panel, I said, you know, you could be like, it's what is it, jack of all trades, master of none, or maybe jack of all trades, master of a few. Right, right, right. Because yeah. it really leads to a lot more job security. So not just versatility. Right. Like with character sure. design, versatility is what kept me employed from design. Right. Because now I go from show to show yeah, to show. Yeah, style changes. Exactly. The one I'm on now was very right. Disney in the first time I looked. Then the story changed, and now it's very pushed. They didn't right. have to get new artists. They just had me do a different style. Right. So now it's also not just versatility in one discipline. It's a versatility of disciplines. Exactly. That's right. And within those disciplines, there is the ability to go from oh, yeah. realistic to cartoon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and that's the one thing that my students sometimes are like really hung up on. I got to be a brand. And I'm like, okay, then you're going to limit yourself. Be a brand, be known for X, Y, and Z, go to the convention, sell your books, sell your stuff. But when it comes time be to be a artist, be the guy, like you're saying, the chameleon. Hey, we're going to move you. Like I went from Angry Beavers to Dora the Explorer. And I was, you know, they gave me a test. And I, I, I did that painting overnight. And they were like, well, you know, how do you do that? Because I'm like, because I study. But you I stay employed, down, exactly. Right? That's the production artist versus the illustrator. Like like, like Carter Goodrich, Peter right. Seth, they right. get hired for their thing. Their That's style. the. That's the envy of all of us, I mean, for sure. But for me, yeah. maybe I don't have, like, a, I guess I have a set style, but for me, it's like, I can do what you need. Right. Exactly. So I stay employed. And, and I think the other really, I'm not really like important. Known like those guys. Right. Yeah, and you, I think you did that by separating yourself from being a guy that's not just going to go to features and do characters, but you're going to go work in TV and other areas right. where you're going to do boards, you're going to be on I the productions. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know, but all those other aspects, they add to it. I mean, I, because even myself, when I was at Big Idea and they said, hey, can we teach you Maya? I was like, you're going to pay me right. to teach me Maya? You hired me to draw environments right. and care and other stuff, and now you want to teach me. And then when I learned Maya, when I came back, my next job a couple years later was working in a 3D department modeling. And I just sat at, it at Mike Young for four years and with Muchi Fawcett, and all I did was model all the time. Right. And I was like... It became your seg. For yeah, and it became my seg where I was like, hey, if I can draw the environments and design them, Modeling's now easy, so now and then it, and then it started to deal with animating a camera, and then all of a sudden I'm doing four tasks on a job where the only average person was doing one job. But it's also you know no no I was gonna say I guarantee you that the reason why they asked you can we teach you Maya is because they knew that you could adapt. Yeah, right. So there's a certain skill set. Exactly. I have also you can go even more on a different level, not just getting paid to learn. Like a new, like they send you like re-education or whatever sure. or employment enrichment. 
think about it if you're working on a show and they ask you to design Roman architecture and you've never done it. You're, you're getting paid for that research and reference and adding that style and, and knowledge and architecture of that era to your forte. Well, yeah, someone's quite, paying you to learn, right, that's which awesome. is the crazy it's thing. Even just, it's even just another thing about that. Like, yeah. if I've been, yeah. like, I, when I worked on a show, let's say, or when I did stuff for, I boarded uh, uh, on Netflix for, I don't know if they've announced it, so I can't say right now. But it was a, it was a, the rabbits, and I wasn't used to drawing rabbits, so you just get really good at drawing rabbits, so you're getting paid at the same time, not really realizing you're, all of a sudden now I'm just drawing rabbits really well. You're the rabbit master, yeah. Yeah, right. right. But, but the cool sure. thing, no, but it's cool, you're right, though. It's, and it's also, you're building that, that, that visual language. Yeah, right? that's what we mm -hmm. talked about today, and, you know, and people ask me that question, oh like, how do you build, I said, you know what, it's not like, it just comes with time, and a lot of people also, they put in a lot of time with it. Uh, with like studying and work and like I'm just not getting right, it. I right, said right. unfortunately, it just takes a while to soak in. You know? So, but, it, it, but it's, that's thanks, fun Dave. Part. Appreciate it. Let sure, us record man. and all your stuff. Just again to plug it out there. All your stuff's uh, available at davisdoodles.com. Oh, Dave but yep. if you go to that site, you'll see a little link in the corner. That's our Etsy store. So you get my books and my apparel. All these yeah. awesome, awesome cool. shirts and stuff. This is great because they're going to love this. We just got to sit and hash out well, 20, get me to do 20 minutes YouTube of... Uh, exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean? So this is cool. Thanks, Dave. Frank Guthrie. Frank Guthrie. Oh, I know yeah. who you are. Okay, all right. Now, it's funny you talk to someone and then they go, oh, like Darren Bader I just talked to. Oh. And I met him for his really cool guy and then he bought my shirt. I was like, I love your stuff. And I'm like, what's your name? He's like, Darren. Darren Bader. I was like, oh, yeah, awesome. Oh, it's, it's great kind of, when yeah. you have yeah. other artists that you respect and they like you. Right, right, right. Like when Claire Wendling, when I met her, she's like, I look at your art every day and it inspires me. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> and like it's funny that's such a mutual respect. It is, right? Especially 